and this is going to mark the part two, uh, the second in a series. I, I think we're going to do at least three uh, or four probably uh, total. So um, this is the second um, addition to the series Going Dark, Making the Transition from Light into Darkness. Um, shifting from conscious human thought and language to subconscious divine thought and language. So really what we're talking about doing is, is just activating, tapping in to our divine nature, activating it, arousing it, calling it up, waking it up, rousing it up. And we're going to do that by way of language. We're going to do that by a way of language, by creating these sigils, which are commands that activate powers, energies, divine powers, divine energies that are resident, dormant, inactive, asleep in all of us. And as far as a symbol goes, the symbol that is going to be key in this, and again, predetermined by our ancestors, is this word rod, R-O-D, rod. And we pointed out in the magician's tarot card, you see the male figure, actually it's a, uh, amalgamation of the masculine and feminine energies, but this is just the, the male representation. You see him uh, with the rod in his hand. And we said that that rod refers to uh, Aaron's rod that budded. And that these, that there were three uh, objects in the Ark of the Covenant, Hebrews 9 and 4. The golden pot that had manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And when we look at these three things, only one, if, you, if you're considering the overall narrative of the Bible, especially the Old Testament, only one of these things was successful in freeing the, the so-called children of Israel. And that was Aaron's rod. I I'll tell you why. The children of Israel ate the manna in the wilderness, correct? Right, and they died. And, and they still died. So we said yesterday, fast forwarding it to, to now, it ain't about a diet like that. It's not about a diet like that. The other was the tablets of the covenant, the stone tablets with the commandments on them. And you all know that before Moses could get down to the to, uh, from the mountain with the tablets, what happened? They had already broken. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and he, he dashed them things to the ground and broke them. Right. And we know that the law has not saved us. Look, following rules and laws that and statutes and command. This ain't done nothing for us, not individually and not as a people. Absolutely right. And we made the observation uh, when we quoted Confucius, where he said that signs and symbols rule the world, not rules and law. So the symbol, the sign of the rod remains. And we know that the rod family 
was effectual from the time that Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh for uh, to liberate the children of Israel, to free them. And even in the crossing of the Red Sea and the entrance into what? The, uh, the promised land, correct? Right. So how did they enter into the promised land? The ark always went before them to remind them that it wasn't about what they ate. It wasn't about no rules or laws, but the only thing that was living <laughs> in the, that was a living uh, power, dynamic power within the ark was the rod that had been cut off uh, from a tree, now see. Right. But it was still sprouting branches. Still had right. So that's symbolic to us. So we're going to absolutely focus, we're going to focus on the rod. And family, this has many, many, many different uh interpretations based on uh your frequency, your thought frequency, and the level of consciousness that you are on. And this is just a higher elevation, one step up that we're going to deal with. But it's, it's going to be very, very effectual for us. Uh, I'm going to remind uh, you all that are joining us to mute your um, microphones, if, if, you know, if you're online or mute your phones. Uh, if if possible, because we, we we're recording and we're getting background information, uh, background interference. So focusing in again on the rod, as well as the staff. Also, family, we'll we'll deal with the staff a little bit later. But we're going to focus in uh, first of all on the rod. The rod, the staff, and the wand, that is the magic wand, have long been, have long and intertwined histories. All three evolved from tools used during Ice Age astronomical observations. That's very important, very important, and we'll get back to that. By 8,000 BC, direction, time, and distance calculations done by a few people improved the lives of everyone. And over millennia, the tools these few used gained the reputation of being divine and magical. So again, we don't want to think that in and of themselves, this rod has some type of magical powers. No, it's referring to the, uh, it's a bit, this symbols or this sigil's ability to what? Activate divine and magical powers within you. We ain't, right. we ain't on that spooky stuff, family. We're not on that spooky stuff. Leave that for religious and superstitious people. We are talking about the power that is uh, within us. And that has a name designation, and we call that melanin. That's all we're talking about. And activating, that's all we've been talking about from the beginning, Nasi. That's all. That's all. <laughs> and activating the, the power of melanin within us, reawakening it reconnecting with it, re-energizing it. Scripture supports this. The prophet Hosea said, my people ask counsel of their stocks. Stocks mean sticks. And their staff declareth unto them. Hosea 4 and 12. 
the rod as a king's scepter indicated great power. Now, we're not talking about, in the beginning, we're just, we're not talking about any political power a king had. And I see, as you pointed out before yesterday, that there was never really one king that they were referring to. Right, right. Like that there was never really one Messiah that is referred to. It was always plural. Uh, Mishikin. Always. You understand? Right. And it was the word king is derived from the word Cain or the word Canaan. All right? The Chaldean word Canaan. And Canaan means king. And we know that there were a bunch of Canaanites running around. Absolutely. Right, right. But when we, and, and you can uh, uh, go to the Bible narrative on this, when we began to fall in consciousness and lose our individual power, we required someone that what demonstrated this power. Now you all remember with Saul that the God of the Bible never wanted the people to have a king like the Gentiles had, right? Right, right. That something that they chose to have one individual over them. instead of doing what? Activating that kingly power within them, within themselves, individually. And this is the problem we're gonna run into, Nasi. Mm-hmm. People gonna think that they can't do it because they've been programmed for someone else to have all that power and exercise that power over them. And you remember, the God of the Bible said, the so-called God of the Bible told Samuel, hey, give them what they want, but be careful to let them know how kings act. All right, what they do to you. And what they do to you. <laughs> how they gonna take all the good land, all the best horses and cattle. Yeah. And that's the system that we elected to be under because we were not confident enough at that point in our uh, devolution to activate these powers within ourselves. We didn't have that confidence, Nasi. Now we have to nope. regain that confidence. This is what all these classes have been about. You are the kings, you are the queens. That's what, that's it. Me and Nazi, we just point you in the direction. And that direction is inward, always, not outward. Not, not, not to know organization, Nazi, <laughs> to know to know cultural organization or institution or building or temple. And Everything is pointing towards the inward element of our share. That's absolutely right. So we are not getting spooky about this. Now, you know, the rod, even as a symbol, don't have no power. It has the power that you give to it. The same way, right. the same way a king, he just like any other man or a president or a supervisor. They just got the power that you give to him. Which is really your authorization for them to do whatever they want to do. You signed off on it. You signed off. Right. On it. Ezekiel 19 and 11 says, and she had strong rods for the scepters of them that bear rule. Of them, strong rods, plural, plural, and scepters plural, for them that bear rule. Them, that's not singular, that's plural. 
Moses was a great magician, instructed in all the sciences and secrets of the Egyptians. And when he performed his miracles, he had his rod. And he was, he was instructed by his higher consciousness to always keep that rod in his hand, in his possession, in the forefront of his awareness. It is still so. Staffs and rods accompanied the prophets. Remember, when we read Psalms 74, and the complaint was, there is no more prophets. <laughs> we see not our signs, therefore there is no more prophet, no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. So there was no one at that particular time that, or very few, that activated these inner powers so that they could act what? Divinely, magically. We all together. Yes. Yeah. So continuing on, focusing on this aspect of the rod. All of us know Psalms 23. That was probably the first scripture verse that we were ever taught to memorize. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. And the shepherd is all about the one carrying what? The rod and the staff, right? Yeah. And you didn't know this. You was really just talking about the powers and the abilities that you had within yourself. Yeah. That right. have become what? Inactive. Right. So, the, so right. our ancestors, in their wisdom, directed our parents to instruct us of the people that were over us to instruct us to do what? Memorize that. And I'm going to tell y'all, you all memorized it for this particular time period right now, for this particular day, because we're going to understand that particular, uh, uh, the um, scripture like we've never understood it before. And we're gonna focus on verse four. Verse four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What is the valley of the shadow of death? What would we refer to that as? In that uh, uh, that's, that's the physical what? earth. No, that's a simulated reality. There you go. Right. That's the simulated right. false matrix of reality. It is a shadow right. of death. It is the valley of the shadow of death. Right. The shadow of death. A shadow can't do nothing to you. It is just a reflection of something else that is organic. Death is not a real concept. Death is just how we perceive it. It is merely a transitional period. And family, it is related. But there are people who are. There are it is related uh, to the Hebrew word. And as a matter of fact, the Hebrew word da'af, meaning knowledge is where the word death originates from. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, let's go back to the to the uh, the three objects that were in the Ark of the Covenant. The, the, the reason that we conform to a diet a heavenly diet or a divine diet is because we fear death. Bottom line, bottom line, the reason we so careful 
about following the Ten Commandments is because we fear death and what and what happens after death. Isn't that true? Absolutely true. <laughs> so absolutely. So it connects with this, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Right. If you still trying to eat to live, isn't that what we say? Eat to live, you still running from the shadow of death. Hi. If, if you are trying, if you are, oh. trying, if you are tr still trying to be good, because you think that there are life in the commandments, being a good moral agent, you still running from death. But whoever, it, who, who, whoever this illuminated being, he ain't running from nothing. He said, I'm walking through. <laughs> Confident, Nasi. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Why is he so confident? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And we already know that that-, that Now we understand is, that. Now you understand that. Right. That you yeah. are in possession, family, of yeah. to activate the divinity in you. You ain't trying to call on nobody yes, to protect yeah. you. You can protect yourself. You are in full possession of those things, that knowledge that can activate, that can wake up the divine in you. Yeah. Simple as that. Simple as that. The word rod, now look, this is going to connect it all up now, see. Go ahead. The word rod here is the word shevet or shebet. Shevet or shebet. Shebet. Doesn't shebet sound alike like Shabbat? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't shebet sound like a lot, a, a lot like sh Shabbat? We'll make that connection later. Shebet from an not here, here, here they go with the funny business from an unused root. That's why I know there we go. Yeah, that's why I know yeah. it connects with the Shabbat rest. That's how I know that. I haven't even looked at it, but I know. And it says probably meaning to branch off. To branch off. And it is referring to what that's happened. always hey, Ty, that's always interesting. Right. They tell you from an unused root and then they go and define it for you. I said you know they're lying. <laughs> you, know. you know they lying and they trying to hide something from you. Yeah, absolutely, right. And and what they are trying to hide from you is what our ancestors hid in the scriptures for us that would aid in our right. life, that would aid in our resurrection that would aid in our empowering ourselves the divinity that is in ourselves that's how i know it connects with the shabbat all i got to do is look at yeah. it i'm not fooled not see by the nickel dope and and the vowel sounds that they put in there that is there you go that is sheen vate tab that is Sheen Vaytav, same words that's in Shabbat. Yeah. That's how I know. We're going to make that connection later. That is literally a stick. All right? That's, that is, that's our symbol. And it can be used, family, for punishing. We're focusing on the writing aspect right now. But it can be used for punishing, for fighting your enemies, <laughs> for ruling. Ruling, <laughs> over, ruling where? Ruling over the simulated reality. 
the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, now watch this. And it can be used for walking. Yea, though I walk. I'm not running. Yea, though I walk <laughs> through the valley. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. I walk through the valley. Why? Because my rod, my walk, my, I got my uh, 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 walking stick. <laughs> it's with me. And my divinity is, is now with me. And figuratively, a clan. Look at this. A clan. A correction, dart, rod, okay, scepter, we got it. Or a tribe, family, a tribe. Yeah, it is. Now, this is going to link us right back up to what we've been teaching y'all about, what we, we've been saying, that the power is in the melanin. The power is in the melanin, in the DNA. And not seek our ability to do what? A sin above genetic control there you go and how do we do that through our perceptions and our thoughts very simple family this is very simple this is all we've been teaching now see it all yep. connects up together it uh, it connects up with everything go back pick any video that we've done pull out the corresponding notes all of it ties together. All it ties together. But where we are right now. So when we are talking about ruling, we are talking about epigenetics. We are ruling our own, what, biology, number one. That's why I don't fear death, now see, because I'm in charge of my own biology. Yeah. I can rewrite my DNA. If I have some type That's of genetic uh, 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 congenital uh, condition, guess what? I can get up over the DNA, take my rod, and what? Rewrite the program. Rewrite. Rewrite. Right. Change it from what? Uh, 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 Dis-ease to ease. <laughs> Change it from uh unhealthy to healthy change a deficiency into abundance wholeness and wealth that is control above the gene that is the power of ascension that is using your magical wand your rod that budded. The instruction was, and thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. And what would accompany activated people, bear with me, but signs and miracles? Signs and miracles. Right, right. Watch this, and this has right. to, this has to do with language. If you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews, the second chapter. And this is directly speaking to us. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect such so great salvation, which at the first began to be what? spoken by the Lord, not in man's wisdom, but in divine language, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard them. God, actually, the divine element in you, 
awakened in you, also bearing them witness, how? Both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to not his own will, your own will, your divine will. Yeah. For unto angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. He ain't put it in the charge of no angels. He's put it in your charge. You're supposed to inherit the earth. But a human being ain't going to do it because all a stronger man has to do is punch you in the mouth, take your rod, and, be, and start beating you with it. Because oh. <laughs> you don't have no power. Ain't this what ha has happened? Yeah. Yeah. So we must activate this power, and this power is melanin. It's, it's what we've been saying. It's melanin. We don't have to look anymore. And this word rod, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. This word rod gives an inter, indirect, uh, 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 indirect hint, not only to our uh, ancestors, our clan, our tribe, that is our, our particular tribe that is providing this knowledge and the impetus for our ascension. It also refers directly to melanin that connects us to our ancestors. Isn't that what we've been saying, fam? Yeah, yeah. A scion is a young shoot or twig of a plant. These are the scions you all see when we look at the Ace of Wands and we look at Aaron's rod that budded, what's coming out of that, those little sprouts, are the scions. The scions. Are you all with me? And a scion is a twig of a plant, especially one cut from grafting or rooting. A descendant, and we're changing that to ascendant of a notable family. Y'all know yeah. if you are on this call, yeah. if you if if you come this far with us and you still rolling with us, you I call y'all family because I know you are that's not just a slang term. I know y'all are family. <laughs> right. We speak in the same language, even though we're using English. We hear in the same language. And isn't that what happened on Pentecost? Yeah, that's what happened. Everybody heard what was being said in their own language. They translated it, not, see, not like humans uh, try to do with their intellect. That was some divine going on there. That was something magical that they were referring to. And the same way that once we started speak, we've had people on here be on here once, and that's the that's their first and last time on the call. Yeah, be right. And that's all right. That's all right. They got to get this according to, you know, what they came here to experience. It, maybe it's too soon. Now, I think a lot of times I heard these things years ago, but it was too soon for me. Right. So I know how it is. I don't cast stones. But I but but I'm I'm tenacious. I'm persistent. And I end up circling back to those things. I'm not gonna stop. I'm definitely not gonna stay where I'm at. Even though no. I, I can't walk with you right now. But understand this. If you are walking with us right now, you are a ascendant of a notable family. And it's your time yep. to ascend right now. This is what yes, this, yeah. this is what this word rod means. It means and it's used um it's used you know as of course the shepherd's rod or the shepherd's crook the the scepter of a king a tribe of the Israelites 
a rod, so called from the scepter of the leader or the prince of the tribe. But we ain't trying to just give one person no rod. We trying to provide all of you all with a rod. Are you all with me? Yes. Ain't ain't no type of hierarchy like that, Nasi. We about it. we trying to get out the hierarchical arrangement. There you go. It is also uh, uh, referring to a measuring rod of a portion measured off and a spear. That is a weapon that you defend yourself with. That's why, you know, I walk through the valley of the shadow. I ain't in no hurry. <laughs> now, see, we know. We know that there's a sense of urgency because we all desire to what? At, like the scriptures say, we all desire to inhabit our new bodies. Absolutely. But we ain't in no, no hurry like that. Like we running from something. Not running from death. <laughs> I fear no evil. I'm not the concept of death, concept of death that everybody's referring to, you know, we have to understand saying that we're going to have to lay down that concept of death in order to what? Be resurrected to the realm of consciousness that is necessary for our new awareness to manifest itself in the conscious elevation. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to pause right here. Just yeah. ask a question. Is this simple so far, family? Is this simple? Candy tie it is. It is. This is definitely not rocket science. Absolutely. Absolutely not. This is rod science. Okay. <laughs> this is rod science. So <laughs> we want to carry this forward. And in order to go forward, we're going to go backwards too because. We've talked about Nasi this branch before. We've talked about this rod right, right. before. And so let's circle back to a topic that we discussed before, the prophetic family or ancestral tree. The prophetic family or ancestral tree. Notice I didn't say the biological family tree. It's a prophetic family. Absolutely not. Because, look, we're not trying to find it like that family through going to Ancestry.com and all that kind of, they're doing DNA tests and all that kind of, we know that that is faulty and it is a distraction. It's, 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 it's a, it's yes, a it diversion to keep us off the trail. We know that we like Melchizedek have what? No beginning. We no beginning and no end. No end. That's why we can that's why I can call y'all family with confidence. With confidence. Because we are from a prophetic family tree. We are among those that that they call the firstborn of the resurrected. Right, AJ. We are the firstborn of the resurrection. I say that with no fear of contradiction. You know why? Because we're doing it. We're not just talking about it. We're doing it. And we've been given the, the, the tools to do it and the instructions on how to use those tools. Isaiah 11, 1 through 4, and there shall come forth, what? A rod of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of its root out of his roots now again that is the Aaron's rod that budded yeah and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and shall make us of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. 
See, as long as we see, we think we've been doing this for a long time, fam. We really, I, I look back and I see it really hasn't been a long time. It might seem like that from an earthly standpoint, right? Right. But it ain't been a long time. So I know y'all have a, a quick understanding because we're here right now. <laughs> every one of y'all testified that this stuff is simple. Yeah. It's simple to you because you are of a quick understanding. And he shall not judge what? After the sight of his eyes. Now, we're not going to use the uh, five cents. Uh, uh, we're not going to rely on the five cents organs. Are y'all with me? Neither reproof. Yes, sir. Neither reprove by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity the meek of the earth. This ain't talking about nothing but the gods of Psalms 82 doing exactly what they supposed to do when they resurrect. And what is that? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. And they're getting more, and more. they're getting more and more out of course. Why? Because we're ascending. And those foundations must follow suit. They must change. Absolutely. They must all. This is why, Kaliah, we're seeing in Guatemala the volcanoes erupting. We're seeing uh, molten lava uh, in Hawaii going about 45, 50 miles an hour, a river of lava. in the vacation capital of the world. So these foundations must be out of course because everything is being corrected. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children, not of the most high. You are children of the highest elevation or the highest order. In other words, the firstborn of them that should be resurrected. Does it make sense? Does it sync up, family? It sync up. Okay. But listen, ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes, unless you do one thing. Kuma Elohim. Rise up, you gods. Judge the earth. You and we ain't waiting for nobody to judge the earth like that. I already said we're doing it. For thou shalt inherit the kingdom. Your rise is directly correlated to the judgment of the earth. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But in order to inherit uh, all these nations, we're going to have to be supermen and superwomen. We are going to have to be the God's return to this planet in every aspect. We're not talking metaphor, family. We're talking the de facto supernatural beings walking around what? In the flesh. Well, halfway in the flesh, halfway out of the flesh. And then we're going to become more etheric then we are physical when we go when we inherit our new body. So it says, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and reprove with equity the meek of the earth. And he, that is the seed of the woman, that's what we said, shall smite the earth. How? 
with the rod of his mouth. Ain't that what we're doing, family? That's right. And we're going to learn how to create sigils that will not seek send judgment where we want to send it. That's the purpose of it, Devon. That's the purpose. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. It's a language, but it ain't the it, it ain't all of these French and 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 uh, uh, Medunetter and Hebrew and Chaldean and uh, you know all these different things. It's the language that you already have in you that you already know. And creating these sigils is the very beginning, family of you creating your own language, of you taking back your, uh, 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 initiating and igniting and arousing that divine power within you. Nothing less than that. Nothing less than that. We're not speaking in metaphors, now see? We're not speaking allegorical anymore. Time out for that. Time out for that. So this word branch, again, is going to refer to this idea of being a scion or an ascendant, an ascendant. Not necessarily, not necessarily, because we know that all of these are allegorical characters, family. So it can't be, right. you know, with none of the people in the Bible, but what they represented. So it is your prophetic family or ancestral tree that you are connected to. It's something that is energetic, something that allows you and gives you the capability, like we said, to rise first, to arise first, to be the firstborn of them that are resurrected those that are activated, those that ascend. The word branch is the word nature, is the word nature, all right? In the sense of greenness as a striking color. So we see it in the branch, in the rod, the green branches coming out of the rod that budded right? Coming out of the right. rod that budded. So this is all connected, all connected. And it's the word Natser. And, you know, of course, we're going to get the word uh, Natser or Natseri or Natserim. Nazarite. Nazarite. And Samson, Shimshon, the Nazarite. Did he have divine power and strength? Yeah. Was he a judge? Yeah. Right. Did he have the power to judge? Yes. Yeah. Arise, you gods, judge the earth. <laughs> but you're going to have to demonstrate that power, that same type of power, similar divine power. Also, it's connected to Jesus or Yeshua, the Nazarene, who was an Essene. Did he demonstrate divine power? <laughs> Absolutely. Miracles, miracles, wonders, signs. That's us. I and the children of Israel are for what? Signs and seasons. It's from the word. All right, there. It's from the word Natsar. We already know this. It's from the word Natsar, which means to guard, in a good sense, to protect, to maintain, also to conceal. It's a hidden thing. It is our hidden power. It is our hidden power. In modern culture, they already made this connection 
with this greenness in the character, The Incredible Hulk. Now, The Incredible Hulk was not always green. You are seeing uh, two drawings by a uh, famous artist. If you're familiar with the uh, Marvel comic books, you'll be familiar with the artist Jack Kirby. And he's the one that drew each of these representations of the Hulk. The one in the middle, you see the scientist Bruce Banner, or the doctor, the scientist Bruce Banner, uh, in the foreground looking horrified and shot. And in the background is this huge hulking figure. And he's not green, he's gray or black. The original Hulk, was rendered in this way, indicating melanin, melanin. And remember, we made the connection through inspiration of our ancestors to connect the melanin in us to the chlorophyll in what? Plants. The rod that budded, the rod that budded. That's just talking about family, very simply activating the melanin in you, and then demonstrating this supernatural godlike ability that was allegorically uh, fashioned in this character, the Hulk, the Hulk, all right? And I have further proof that this representation of the Hulk is actually a representation of a, of, of, uh, a, a, a black, a uh, slave figure, an enslaved figure, all right? And this, this actual figure uh, or this actual power or energy, that it, the divine power energy is, is captive within us. It remains captive, remains dormant in us. And it is up to us to empower it. It is up to us to unleash it. It's up to us to become this, all right? Activated melanin, neuromelanin, is the only source of genuine divine power in heaven and on earth. We stated this be uh, before. Power is the word, uh, it, the power in uh, Greek. The, the, the Greek word for power is dynamis or dunamis, dunamis, all right? G1411, G1411, and it's from um, G1410. And it is literally talking about miraculous power, a miracle, the miracle itself or the worker of the miracle. Ability, abundance, meaning, might, worker of miracles, power, mighty, wonderful work. As a side note, this word dunamis, here you all might want to use this word uh, to make a sigil out of it. I would suggest it be one of your first words. I am dunamis. I am dunamis. <laughs> I am power. I am miraculous power. I am the miracle itself. I am the worker of the miracle. That is what is attached to that word. That is a very that would be a very powerful sigil. Very powerful sigil. Are you all with me? It also means inherent power. That's power that is resident in you, power residing in you, in a thing, by virtue of your nature. You are, your nature is that you are from a prophetic family tree. You are a scion, a descendant of a notable family. And it's not uh, uh, so much an earthly family. It is the, fa is the family, it is what you were a part of when you emanate, uh, before you emanated in here. 
before you emanate it in here. Everyone, Nasik, is not going to have that perception. Everyone is not going to be able to generate that divine thought because they do not believe that they emanated in. They believe that they are human, flesh and blood, that they had a mother and father like that, according to the flesh, and that's it, end of story. But we know as divine beings that have activated that part of our memory that we emanated in here and thus we are connected to an inherent power that is residing into us by our very nature. And it also means the power of performing miracles. Uh, G1410, to be able to have power by virtue of one's own ability and resources and what? State of mind or level of consciousness. State of mind or level of consciousness. Now again, originally, someone has their microphone open. Originally, the Hulk was gray or black, and then they turned him green. But still, we'll accept that that uh, they made, of course, the connection between melanin and chlorophyll. And this is nothing new. In the modern or contemporary comics, you see that they have the Green Hulk fighting against the Black or the Gray Hulk. And again, this is a ritual. This is a ritual to get us to be ever at odds with ourselves and have the inability to make these simple connections with melanin and chlorophyll, even when we're looking at a comic book, a so-called comic book. In ancient times, as we've talked about it before, these, uh, the symbol of the rod, the symbol of the branch was personified in, uh, first of all, green Osiris, green Osiris in Egypt, and the green man, Al-Qadir, the green man. We've talked about him before. We've talked about him before. And Al-Qadir, listen, is the first, just like we are the firstborn among them that are going to be resurrected, that we are children of the highest elevation, of the highest rank, the firstborn children. El Qadir is the first among the unseen beings and guides who are among us. It, it says that thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So we have not only the, the, the divine nature within us, we have a direct link a direct link through ancestry, through divine ancestry to all such individuals that have what? Are first among these individuals that go forth first, that are the primary movers and shakers. And we have that knowledge to guide us. We have access through activated melanin and activated DNA, fully activated DNA. And as we are witnessing, this knowledge, this intellect, got this divine intellect guides and helps us. And that we are what? Encouraged to call on them for help. Al-Qadir is another word or name that if you're doing a sigil and that that if you want to uh, if you want to evoke guidance higher spiritual guidance within yourself you can use the you can use that name al-qadir and create a sigil 
from that. Is every, everybody getting what, what I'm talking about as we move on? Okay, you, Ty. Okay. We already know all these things, family. We already know. Them. And I'm encouraging us to gather this knowledge and begin to think about how you are going to activate it. How are you going to activate it? There's so many things. I'm going to show you all some of the sigils that I created at the end of the class and uh, to, to just give you an idea. Now, I haven't begun anything, and I'll explain why, because I'm still in the uh, process of forgetting what it is that they ever meant, <laughs> encapsulating them. And, and, and bypassing what? The player hating ego. <laughs> so who is the green one? And understand, this is not anything that exists outside of you. Literally, Al-Qadir means green one, which represents uh, what is fresh and new. That's why uh, you know, our ancestors are telling us, now see, we can't use old symbols. We can't use old language. We have to create something that is fresh and new. That will be what? Eternal and the source of light. To tap into what is eternal. To tap into the source of light. There are many stories about how he acquired the appellation. In Sufic tradition, Qadir has come to be known as one of the Afrad, those who receive illumination direct from God without human meditation. That is another word, Afrad. Afrad, if you desire to activate that ability for direct illumination, direct connection, between your lower self and higher self. You can use the name Afrad or the word Afrad. He is the hidden initiator of those who walk the mystical path like some of those from the Uwasi Tarika. Uwasis are those who enter the mystical path without being initiated by a living master. You all are among those. You don't have to go through all of these things. You have the ability to direct connect. You also have the cheat codes. Now see, we, the, the ancestors have provided us with the cheat codes. If we weren't those people, they wouldn't have provided it. Everybody is not walking around talking about these things or teaching these things. Y'all with me? Okay. Instead, they began their mystical they began their mystical journey either by following the guiding light of the teachings of the earlier masters, we've indeed done that, or by being initiated by the mysterious prophet Saint Kadir. Kadir, the green one. One very popular Quranic hero is Al Kadir, the green one who appears in Surah 18, Al-Kaf, verses 60 through 82. Seeking wisdom, Moses travels to meet one of God's servants, whom commentators usually identify as Al-Qadir. Moses, in unexpectedly meek mode, begs to follow the servant as a disciple. Despite Al Qadir's constant warnings that Moses cannot stand the pace, he seemingly commits acts of violence and vandalism to Moses' horror until he eventually explains the higher purpose underlying his deeds. He had to do things that were unconventional in order to open things up within himself that don't apply to what? Rules, laws, regulations, statutes, judgment. He appeared to be what? Breaking the law. His apparent crimes 
were an illusion that even Fox the Great Moses, because Al Qadir knew the supremacy of what? Signs and symbols, as opposed to what Moses represented, the law and rules and commandments. Are you all with me? We got to break outside of that moralistic prison. Okay. That moralistic prison that the uh, that we've been programmed into in the simulated reality. And again, not uh, advocating running out and breaking laws and starting that, you know, act like a fool or nothing like that, but not being confined by those things. It's not going to change who you fundamentally are. Melanin makes us fundamentally righteous. That's why y'all have been pursuing it up, up till now. Now, the transition comes from pursuing righteousness and, and being the king of righteousness to being what? The king of Salem or the king of Shalom. The green man and the king of Salem. Melchizedek appears as the character in an extensive Adam mythology that circulated in early times and which was hugely popular in the Eastern Syriac world. In the Cave of Treasures, which certainly influenced the Quran, he joins Noah, son of Shem, in moving Adam's body to its new site in Golgotha under what would centuries later become the place of Jesus' crucifixion. Shem appointed Melchizedek to carry out his priestly duties on the site forever. Thou shalt be a priest of the Most High God because thou alone hath God chosen to minister before him in this place. And thou shalt sit here continually and shalt not depart from this place all the days of, of thy life. The scene is thus set for his later meeting with Abraham. So all of this th these things, our ancestors connected together in a really seamless narrative that runs throughout the Quran, runs throughout other so-called sacred documents, the Bible, the Old and the New Testament family, the Old and the New Testament, if you know how to decode it properly with the proper knowledge, And it instructs us on one thing, and that is how to activate our divinity, how to activate the divinity, that power, that dunamis, that divine magical power that resides in each of us. Getting ready to close now. We're going to focus in on Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost has fully come. Now, Pentecost, we know, is the is, is what's called the Feast of Weeks, correct? When the day of Pentecost has fully come, they, and this is how we're going to connect it to the Shabbat as well, the day of Pentecost. Now, remember, the ancestors are speaking to me now. Remember, the word for rod is the word for, uh, is, is the word Shavet, correct? Shavet or Shavet. Okay. What is the number seven in Hebrew? The number seven in Hebrew. What is the number seven in Hebrew? Sheva, right? Okay. So you see the connection with the day of Pentecost. Seven is the number of completion. Is the number of completion. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Where does that remind you of, family? Genesis 11.
the place where the languages were confused, correct? Okay. Something new and fresh. This is our ancestors saying a new and fresh language must come forth. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, they, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. This is the Ruach. And it filled the, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues at, like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began speaking with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. So we're going to now connect this New Testament scripture that refers to a new beginning, creating another language to the act of creating a sigil, a sigil, all right? We've already gone over it, but we're going to take our understanding to another level and understand how to speak things to exist in, into existence for both cancellation, death, and creation, life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You know, a lot of us have been taught to say a lot of things, have been programmed to say a lot of things, but we ain't ate no fruit yet based on those. Or, or if we have, it's been very little. It's been very little. We have not had much, you know, uh, much in the way of results. So we're going to tackle this again uh, tomorrow in the third series, part three. Uh, I will put this recording, I didn't send a recording out because I know this is going to be multiple series. So I wanted to at least put two together. So the one that we did yesterday, I'll uh, upload it with this one so that, uh, so, so that we have it. And I'll send both of those together in an email uh, along with the amended notes. So with that, uh, uh, go ahead, go right ahead. I want to show you something before we close. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording right right here and you can uh go ahead uh Kali and show me.